go over yesterday's recap and then we'll go over today's action what we're looking for beautiful day yesterday um, let's go over that real quick all right so let's take a look at this so you should have got yesterday's um, trade setups uh, Gerald sent this out in the uh, email to you guys uh, yesterday uh, we talked yesterday about the uh, major breakdown in the market um, so let's go back to market profile real quick what I discussed on the microphone yesterday was if we break 86 at this level 86 then we have some major downside in the market we're gonna look for two setups we already had the first wave we cannot have a failure trade because we're in a downtrend so we're gonna look for a we're gonna look for slingshot trades and momo trades so we talked about that at uh, 8 30 in the morning right here and I drew this up I drew both of these wedges before they broke uh, one wedge here we had a short here on a slingshot and then it came back up tested the high value area and then I I put in this wedge uh, yesterday well, before we I broke also. I said if we break below 86, C3 then we got some major C3 downside. C3 we're going to look for slingshot C3 trades, oh, no, and we're going to look for Momo trades. And I got our target at 44.60, I said yesterday. This was at uh, 8.30 in the morning. So Correct. right here, I said the first target would be 60 if we break. What and is that was right price? there. It went right to it, um, right around 11 o'clock in the morning. It got as low as what 60.50. So 60.50. How did I come up with that target? I look at previous market profile levels. That's how I come up with these targets. So that was my target yesterday um, in the morning, and we hit it. So we had several momentum trades and several slingshot trades. So what we're going to do this morning, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give you the key breakdown and breakout levels. I'm going to see what type of pattern that we're in. And then we're going to look for setup. So market profile can guide you. It can guide you by letting you know if there's a big hole in the market, which there was yesterday from 86 um, all the way down to that 60 level. And that even crashed below 60, below my price profiles yeah, and it got down to picky, uh, 47 but instead of so away, um, profile can be very very sorry. very I'm sorry, I uh, simple to understand so, if you stick to the basics basically okay. if you break low value area this low value okay that's all the volume in the market okay. all the hedge funds well, prop well, firms well, professional well, amateur well, traders all the volume in the market it's looking at the most the, the average volume the most volume that's traded uh, the average is right there the control point that's the most volume that's been traded during the day on this chart and that that comes up with a high value low value area so what happened yesterday the low value area was sitting right here at 86 this green volume profile was sitting right there at the 86 level and uh, once we broke it, you can see we just got a unicell eighty-four. Really, a lot of downside of movement. So we'll do that today. We'll see what market profile. The, the most important market profile levels to look at are these big red, blue, and green levels, okay. now, and these thin green small, and red levels. The reason being is Where, the know, that is all the volume in the market. That's all the participants in the market. That's not my opinion. That's not your opinion. That's every single participant that's in the market, and it's taking the average of what's going that's traded. They make it hard. And my calculation derives where the market should stop at the at the highs and lows. And if it doesn't do that, if it breaks through it, we're looking for some major downside or upside pressure in the market. So yesterday, you can see the high value developing caught the high after that wedge high. And then it broke the developing low, and that actually was the volume low, and then it just got cranked to the downside. So we'll look at these levels this morning. Uh, we have a nice setup coming up here this morning, which I'm going to go over here in a second. Now let's go over these setups. So that's one way to gauge market strength or weakness by looking at the market profile right when you uh, get into the log into your trading platform. That's the first thing I look at. I look to see what all the participants are doing in the market. And that gives me a gauge of strength and weakness. Then what I can do is once I know the breakdown, the breakdown to me yesterday was 86. That was low value area. 
Yeah, yeah. So 86 30. was a key number. I kept going over that in the trading room. Uh, 86 was a very key I number like breakdown. I said if we were break 86, now, look for Momo slingshot uh, because more, that's going to be more than everybody where the market is going to drive your itself. Filters, the low low value price. area. And that's what we got. We got this big drive that happened right when we broke a low value area. We started driving lower, and we got a slingshot, a Lomo slingshot, and the market went from 86 down to 47. Pretty much straight down from 10 o'clock to 12:30, 12:45. So two and a half hour period, it just got really split to the downside. So let's take a look at these two setups. So we have four trading setups. I have several videos. I'm not going to go all over all four of them. If you want to see all four videos, uh, there's videos on all four of our setups. The first one's a first wave. Second one is a, a slingshot. Third one is a Momo, and fourth one is a failure trade, where it's a Babe Ruth where you're looking for this market to actually go against this trend. So we have all those setups and we know how to uh, previous videos where you can jump in there and you can uh, you can look at those setups. That's uh, what I want. And see if you can uh, take advantage of getting into those uh, uh, those four setups. But let's take a look at these Momo and a slingshot today specifically. So what what did I mean by looking at slingshots and Momo? Uh, right when we broke the 86 level. Um, a slingshot is very simple. First of all, we need to go with the uh, zone trend. If zone, the, these, these zones have been back tested for 30 years, so we know how accurate they are. Uh, they, one, give you trend, and two, give you places where the market should reverse. So if you looked at yesterday from the previous day, actually, uh, at five, at 3:55 on the previous day Eastern Standard Time, um, it was short bias from 3:55 all the way to uh, one almost two o'clock yesterday. So it told you if you're trying to buy these lows, these counter trend traders that continue to try to buy these lows and use these oscillators and use all these indicators and strategies trying to buy these lows, they're getting stopped out all day. So they got stopped out all day because they kept on trying to catch the low. Well, we do things a little bit different. Um, we know a little bit more about price action based upon we're looking for sell the low, buy, buy lower. So we sell low up here. We're buy, selling low, buying lower. Selling low, buying lower. Selling low, buying lower. And then when the market's in uptrend, we're buying high and selling higher. Well, what does that mean? Because we're not trying to catch these lows on the down, downside. We're not trying to catch these lows because that's against zone trend. These have been back tested for 30 years. We know that, number one, if they're red or green uh, on a larger Renko, which we have here, that, that, that's going to tell us our trend, whether we need to be net buyers or net sellers. So we were net sellers all day yesterday. So there's two setups that specifically happen when we break low value area or high value area market profile. And these are the two. The reason I said the two setups to concentrate yesterday before the 86 break, I said Momo and Slingshot because I, I, I recognize that that we're not into a we're in a trend break, so we don't get a lot of failure trades on a trend break, and we don't get first wave trades typically because we're already in a trend if we're breaking through profile. So we typically just have our last two setups, Momo and Slingshots. Well, what's the difference between a Momo and a Slingshot? Very simply. A slingshot is where our we, we have these. Um, if, if, if you're going to be very uh, astute with the system and you understand how to trade the system, all four setups, you're going to recognize two things. Two things have to happen. One, you got to have the zone, and you got to have our signal lines come together. So both have to meet our criteria before we get any one of our four trades. So you have to have the signal lines that match down here. We have specific criteria. We have plenty of videos at, uh, on our website under uh, videos if you want to play those. But specifically, I was looking for a Momo and slingshots on a break of high value and low value. So slingshot is where you have a, we have two oscillators down below. We have a thin oscillator and a large oscillator. And the thin oscillator, what it does is it tells us if the market is in a retracement and the thicker oscillator it tells us the strength of the trend so if i am in a 
move down, zone move down, then I have these signal lines down here that tell me the weakness or strength of the market. Now, I have four lines. I have my standard 20 and 80 on the oscillator, but then I have my proprietary 65 and 40 that I back tested 30 years. And so what I recognize is that if I'm below 65 on my large oscillator, then I am weakness in a downtrend. If I'm in an uptrend, if I'm above 40, I'm in an uptrend. So if my large oscillator is below 65 and I have a red zone, I'm in a hard move down. So you can see on both slingshots, if you look at when I broke my 86, my 86 was my support. I was talking with traders all morning about breaking the wedge, looking for an 86 break. Right there is my 86 break. So as I broke my 86, we got into Momo, which I'm going to second. But then if you look at my large oscillator, on the retracement, when it started retracing, these counter trend traders started getting into the market, my large oscillator is below 65. That's check number one. Check number two is I want my small oscillator, I want to go above 80 and get stretched like a rubber band. Imagine taking a rubber band with your left hand, stretching out with your right hand, and then letting it go with your right hand. It snaps back. The market likes to snap back. Imagine stretching this market and then it snaps back and continues. Well, that's what this oscillator does. It gets above 80 and we shoot down below right here, my bull zone. I want to get below my bull zone because if I don't get below my bull zone, then this market can come down to my bull zone, 40, and go right back up and that produces what's not my number four trade, which is a failure trade. So in slingshots, we want it to get through this bull zone. We want the, this small oscillator push through we want my large oscillator on, uh, uh, to be below 65 on weak, weak slingshots. Now, I'll show, I'll show you slingshots where this one, where the oscillator is above 80 on both, which I'll show you that one also. But I, these are slingshots I really don't want to miss because this is typically when we're breaking market profile. If you see this large oscillator below 65 uh, for shorts or above 40 for buys, and then you get a full retracement where you're getting that oscillator that goes above 80, shoots down through that bear zone of 40 and 20. That's a great slingshot. It has a great dynamic move to the downside here. Same thing happened over here. We had a retracement. Counter trend traders came in on the slingshot. And then we have our small, our large oscillator sitting below 65. And then we get the full retracement, the snapback, get above 80, shoot down through my bull zone of minimum 40, has got to shoot through that minimum 40. Uh, some would like even like to go through 20, and then you get roll into the downside. Now, the other slingshot you have, this is this is the weakest slingshot you're going to get. This is the best slingshot you're going to get in the market on a short. Because I got my large oscillator is below 65, and I've got my small oscillator getting stretched above 80 down through 20, stretched above 20. The other slingshot is here in this morning before we broke down through. Now, this is a forming of a small wedge also but this is still inside a profile. So what happened was our large oscillator gets above 80 and our small oscillator uh, gets above 80, crashes down through our, bear, our bull zone and it, it starts crashing down also. This is still a viable setup. The difference in slingshot from this slingshot and this slingshot is a large oscillator. The large oscillator is above actually 80. They're both above 80. That's okay. You're allowed to have that type of setup. But what you're going to find with these slingshots, these are blow-off, sell-off, blow-off rallies. This is where you have a lot of buy stops that are getting uh, uh, hit or sell stops are getting hit based upon your the market is trying to find value. It keeps lowering itself, lowering itself, lowering itself. So this is called an imbalance in the market. So what I'll find, what I find when I break through market profile is I'm finding slingshot imbalances happen um, when you, your, your large oscillator is below 65 on a slingshot. That's a sell imbalance. They can't find value. They, they keep lowering price to find value. So these are very, very neat little slingshots with my zones that I love. Where this is a more of a balanced market slingshot, where the market is sort of balanced still. We're inside a market profile, so this is a balanced slingshot. So knowing the difference can help traders out based upon order size. And I, I talked about this yesterday with traders in the room, how you can position trade on going larger contracts or smaller contracts or doing micros or doing bigger contract. So typically, if you're inside a profile, uh, micros are the best way to go. You get outside a profile, 
um, depending on your risk tolerance, larger contracts are uh, a, a way to go. So, I mean, the, the big contract. However, if based upon your risk tolerance, you can trade micros all day long or large contract sizes all day long. But you can position size if you are inside of mark, market profile, you know, I'm looking for a, a, of a lower probability move where I'm outside of an imbalanced market. I'm looking for a straight line shot. Hey, let's get this. This is the type of moves you're looking at in an imbalanced market. The market became imbalanced right when I broke my low value area. That's a type of move you get in an imbalanced market. Where you get a balanced market when you're inside a profile, this is the type of move you get. So you see a big difference in slingshots versus if you look at a slingshot here and a slingshot here versus getting outside a profile. Look at the legs. Decent leg, decent leg. Then the market just gets crumbled. So, you know, that's the biggest difference in a slingshot where your oscillator is below 65, your larger oscillator is below 65 with a full retrace on the slingshot versus the oscillator that is above. So what I like to do is I like to look at that for strength and weakness in the market. Uh, fortunately for us, I was able to, uh, uh, you know, identify both um, both uh, wedges before they broke yesterday. I drew them up in the room for you before they even broke on both of them, and we were able to identify low value area. I drew this before it broke, then I drew this before it broke. I said if we break 86, uh, the bait, I mean, this thing can fall, uh, really fall pretty hard down to 60, and that was 86. And my analysis was, was based upon uh, my low value area was right here in volume profile and also my development profile. So you can see what I try to do then is I try to find holes in the market with market profile and then I go back and I look to see where my setups are going to come in based upon a balance or imbalance market.